come back with me. Back to one of the darkest days in the history of search engine optimization. The day the internet held its breath. The 22nd of May, 2013. For this was a day when a previously innocuous bird became a word that invoked pure terror in the minds of digital marketeers around the world. Yes, this, ladies and gentlemen, was the day that Google rolled out its Penguin 2.0 algorithm. One in 43 websites were impacted. Nobody was spared. If you were hit by Penguin, the chances are you've been shaken off page one of Google, sometimes never to be found in the search engines again. Just imagine if you were in charge of one of those websites on that fateful day. You come into the office absolutely oblivious to what's occurred. All of a sudden, things don't feel right. The phones aren't ringing as much. There's less sales coming through the e-commerce part of the website. Very intrigued by this, you check Google Analytics, and to your horror, organic traffic has dropped off a cliff. Your heart starts racing. You start checking feverishly the search engines to find your website, and it cannot be found. You pick up the phone to your SEO agency or SEO department, and they deliver the news you've been dreading. You've been slapped by Penguin. <coughs> For me, on that fateful day, I was rather pensive. For months and months prior to Penguin coming, I'd been terrified, sleepless nights. I thought all of my clients were going to be knocked off Google and Fountain would be in a lot of trouble. Fortunately, none of them were hit. But my heart went out to the people that were. I started seeing the carnage on social media hearing about businesses literally dropping out of Google and losing 80, 90% of their revenue. So I wanted to help out. So I had a cheeky idea. I stuck a Google ad at the top of the Google for the keyword Penguin 2.0, saying, have you been hit? If so, Fountain might be able to help out. And over the coming days and weeks and months, the phone rang off the hook. And I spoke to probably 30 or 40 businesses and helping them answer this very painful question. How do you deal with overnight disruption to digital marketing campaigns? What do you do when your traffic gets cut off like that? And the learnings I got from that period started to filter into Fountain's <coughs> approach to our methodology and strategies and will make up a lot of what I want to talk to you about this evening. But let's come forward in time for a little bit to about four months ago. I'm sitting at a board meeting of a long-standing client of ours. Two of my staff members have just finished delivering a presentation on their digital marketing strategy for 2018. And the next item on the agenda is GDPR. And the MD puffs up his chest rather proudly and says, we have the very best GDPR practitioners money can buy. So there'll be no problems come May next year. Now, I have a little niggling thought in the back of my mind, so I decide to ask a question. Are you guys still buying brokers, buying leads from brokers? And all heads turned to the marketing director, who said, well, yeah, actually, on the international side of our business, we get 40% of leads from brokers. So, OK, that's interesting. When people fill out the broker's websites, the getaquote.com style websites, do they give their consent for people to, for the brokers to sell on the data to the likes of, of you. And the guy says, well, no, they just sell them on to whoever gives them money. And as soon as he delivered that answer, you could see the penny drop and the fear begin to rise. And obviously, I can't give legal advice, but I said that may be a problem. And it's funny, I was a couple of weeks later, I was actually having coffee with Martin at uh, St. Giles House Hotel. And he tells me a very similar story of a very large high street brand he'd been in who had exactly the same problem. And at that point, I realized we probably should put on an event to actually have this discussion. And this is the beginning of a series of talks I'm giving over the coming weeks and months to explore and look at the impact of GDPR on digital marketing as a whole. Because the way I see it, there are two types of businesses. There are these guys here that get their new business from the likes of affiliates, brokers, third party databases. And there are these guys here that get it from more direct traffic, and obviously there are people in between. I'm going to argue this evening that both will be impacted by GDPR, both directly and indirectly. 
Let me explain why. These guys here, as Martin's very eloquently explained, will need more consent. More consent means a lower conversion rate, which means fewer leads at a higher cost. But what about these guys here? Surely they're fine, right? They're just generating their own leads, their own traffic. What's the problem? They'll get better first-party opt-in, but what's the problem going to be? Well, think about it in the context of these guys. If you got most of your new business through affiliate and you started getting fewer leads at a higher cost, what are you going to do? The chances are you're going to move your marketing budget into pay-per-click. So what happens if overnight everyone starts piling into pay-per-click? Well, we're in a room full of marketeers, we know that. Competition will push up the price. If there's a few very core keywords that you like being at the top of Google for, what happens if overnight five or six people pile in? So the way I see it, doing a lot of thinking about this, is there are three core challenges we may be facing in the second part of the year. The first one is fewer leads at a higher cost from more, more third-party channels, such as affiliates, email, etc. Second one is higher CPCs from pay-per-click advertising. So people that are just focused on their own game that think, oh, well, you know, GDPR, it's a compliance thing, my compliance department's got it sorted, I'm just going to focus on my AdWords campaign, might not realise that actually the CPCs are about to shoot up through the roof. That in turn will lead to fewer leads at a higher cost. Both of them together could cause potential disruption to market share. So what's the solution? Well, going back to our, our board meeting, that's the exact same question the MD with his puffed up chest asks me, points his finger and says, look, you've been our agency for the last seven years, figure it out, what's the solution? Well, actually, it was a lot of the strategies we've been doing already for the domestic side of his business and rolling them out to the international side. And I've picked three strategies this evening that I want to take you through that hopefully will mitigate some of the challenges I've just outlined on the previous slide. So some of you are probably wondering, OK, well, that's great. But firstly, who are you? Are your strategies any good? And are there any third parties to verify you actually know what you're talking about? My name is Marcus Hemsley. I'm one of the founders of Fountain. We're a strategic digital marketing agency set up about a decade ago. Our mission is to take the risk out of marketing and deliver exponential ROI. How do we do that? Well, we forecast up front to take the risk out, and then we measure and track everything, dialing up the parts of the funnel that will bring the best profitability. And over the last 10 years, we've obsessively worked on our methodology. And in 2016, this was awarded at the highest level possible, when Google had its very first premier partner international awards. Now, to be a Google premier partner, you have to be in Google's top 3% of agencies. This is based on agency size, agency spend, agency retention, but also the qualifications of our staff. 1,500 agencies from EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, entered the Google Awards, and 90 were shortlisted for the main one, which was Best Search Performance Agency, and found him were one of them. And as soon as I got the news, I was really confident. I was really confident we weren't going to win. I'm a numbers man. One in 90, I didn't like those odds. And I'll be honest, I'm quite a bad loser. So I very graciously gave up my tickets to the finals and the award ceremony in Dublin to my general manager. And obviously, I felt like quite an idiot when obviously we, we won first prize. The following year, Google decided to take it one step further. They said, OK, whoever wins the region, so EMEA, North America, Asia, will fly them out to New York for the global finals. And once again, Fountain entered. Once again, we were shortlisted for EMEA. And once again, I didn't like those odds, so I stayed at home. Once again, we won EMEA. We were flown out to, Europe, Africa, to uh, New York. I decided to jump on the plane that time, and I'm glad that we did, because we ended up winning Google's Global Award for growing businesses online. I just want to give a shout out to EMEA because there were six global awards. Europe, Middle East and Africa took three of them. And actually the UK took two. There was us and Push Marketing as well who won best global mobile campaign. So actually when you look at digital marketing around the world, 58 countries, it's actually amazing the strength we have here in the city of London. It's, it's quite good. But I'm being honest, it's not, I don't really do it for the methodology or the technology or the awards. What I, I do what I do because I love getting results for people. and I love the impact that has on people's lives. The thing I'm actually most proud of is about five years ago, we took a failing startup, turned it around and helped them become the fastest growing estate agency franchise in the UK. And they were acquired after three years for 15 million pounds. And the impact that had on the owners, on the staff, the franchisees, that's actually why I do what I do. And our clients vary. We have fewer 
startups now, if I'm being honest. So we've got local clients here, such as Stansted Express, Winkworth Estate Agency. We have more national clients, such as Roman Originals. You may not have heard of Roman Originals, they own 220 stores around the UK, but you will have heard of that dress. In February 2015, this dress broke the internet because no one could agree on the colours, and obviously it's clearly red and gold. But as an, as an aside, that was an absolutely cracking SEO campaign because of the organic backlinks. And the only problem with Roman Originals is everyone's heard of the dress, and yet more so than the brand. We also have a couple of global clients that are here this evening. But anyway, tonight is about you, not about me. You've invested your time and your energy to be here, and I want to give you the maximum return on investment. You know, I always think when I'm giving a presentation, actually, what are the three or four strategies that if you implemented or enhanced in your campaigns that you'd actually get return on? So without further ado, how do we deal with disruption? So there are three strategies I want to share with you this evening. First one is full attribution and 80-20 sales and marketing analysis. This will help us deal with fewer leads, get more profit from them. The second one is conversion rate optimization. How to deal with higher CPCs, how to get more leads from less traffic. And the third one, it's one of my favorites at the minute, advanced remarketing, get more sales, stay front of mind and be a thought leader, leverage a lot of dormant content you may have kicking around on your websites and social media profiles. So let's begin. This has to be probably one of my favorite quotes of all time in business, in life, but most importantly in marketing. What you measure, you can improve. Obviously, what you don't measure, it's very hard to improve. So when we first start working with someone, we ask them to get their house in order, which can be a little bit painful. We do something called full tracking. Now, what do I mean by full tracking? That's tracking right the way down from the keyword level all the way through to lifetime value of customer, not just sale, lifetime value. But if you imagine it, once you get that full visibility of all of the funnels, you can start seeing the machine. You can start seeing I'm putting in a pound here, getting 10 pounds out here. So if I tweak this and this, I can get 15 pounds out or 20 pounds out. It allows you to actually prioritize what you want to do. So what I'm talking about here is attribution. But we can all agree that not all customers are created equal. And what we want to do is get more, the most profitable customers, because I believe that optimization is about prioritization. The chances are you're paying an agency or you're paying in-house staff to optimize your campaigns. Every pound you spend with them needs to yield the best returns, right? The problem is we have the human element. We have our people optimizing, and it's their decisions that will impact the return on investment. And marketers, I observed over the last decade, tend to be a little bit creative on how they use their time. So a good way to regiment them is 80-20 sales and marketing analysis. Show of hands who here has read this book. Just two of you guys. <laughs> and someone at the back, great, and she's Fountain as well. What Perry Marshall says in this book, even I recommend it, but here's a spoiler. He shows that the Pareto principle works in digital marketing as well that 20% of the ads will bring 80% of the revenue. What I like about what Perry Marshall talks about is that he chunks it up. So the top 20% of the top 20%, i.e. 4% of the ads, will bring 64% of the revenue. Now, this is shown very beautifully by this graph. 20% of the ads here are bringing 80% of the revenue, or 4% here bring 64 You want more clicks from these guys here, right? and you want more conversions from them, and you can prioritize your campaigns, then you work backwards down the tail in order of priority. Now, some of you might be thinking, yeah, OK, Marcus, that's pretty basic. I'm sure my guys are doing that. What I challenge you to say to them is, OK, are they actually looking past lead volume and CPL? Because what they should be looking at is lifetime value. And let me show you a funnel to explain. Most digital marketers play around here. Impressions and clicks, right? They get click-through rate, they get conversion rate, and they get feedback, lead and cost per lead, right? They then make their prioritization, the optimization decisions, on this data here. But they ignore all of this. So imagine if they actually had alignment. The problem is so many businesses don't have sales and marketing alignment. And too often I speak to digital marketers and say, how's the campaign going? Yeah, great, cool. Yo, leads are up, cost per leads down. OK, how are sales? What's the return on investment? Long silence. There's that disalignment there. But imagine for a second you've had your full tracking, and we can see right the way down to this level here, raving fans, maximum lifetime value. And if we have, say, a campaign of, say, a 1,000 keywords, and we attribute right the way down, we can find perhaps the top 40 most profitable keywords that are going to bring these guys here. 
So let's just play a game for a second. We know your top 40 most profitable keywords. Now we get to work and start smashing the funnel. This is where fountain play, click through rate and conversion rate. Now I'm gonna assume that you guys will have systems in place to be constantly measuring and dialing up sales, conversion rate, resell, upsell, etc. I just want to give a quick shout out to Martin Zeman, I think you knew it was coming. So Martin runs an agency called Data Driven Era, and I normally get Martin in when people don't have systems in place. This is where Martin plays. He tracks sales performance and increases conversion there. And Martin and I work for a chap called Adrian O'Gara, who works on the human side of stuff, so getting sales and marketing teams to speak to each other and like each other and actually get some form of alignment. When the three of us come together, we offer a service called Full Funnel Optimization. So we're smashing all parts of the funnel. And the ROI from that is monstrous when you do it. Let's just start with the top of the funnel now. How do we get more clicks? How do we increase click-through rate? Add split testing. Some of you are going, okay, Marcus, well, obviously, fine. But what I've observed again is a lot of marketeers approach ad split testing in a rather haphazard way. It's a Tuesday afternoon, I fancy doing an ad split test, I fancy doing it on this keyword because I can write a cool ad for it. And so people are smiling because they know, right? This, that, that's exactly how a lot of people do it. If you do it in a more regimented way, you'll get better results. So what I mean by that is we've got our top 40 keywords. I tell my guys, do 50 ad split tests, one after the other, just keep smashing it. And when you do that, you get one outlier. It's really interesting. So say, for example, we're smashing this ad split test and we're getting 4% and then 4.1 then 4.2 and all of a sudden, boom, an 8% click-through rate. We've got our outlier. That's what we want and our really profitable keyword. And as we're sending more and more traffic, we can now look at dialing up the conversion rate optimization. If there's one thing I want you guys to take from this evening, it's this. Invest more into conversion rate optimization. I've yet to find a business that's come to me and said, Marcus, we've lost tens of thousands of pounds because we've ever resourced conversion rate optimization. Yet every day, and I'm sure you guys are the same, you hear horror stories of people that have wasted tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds on advertising campaigns, media spend on the, on the wrong channels. It's, absolute, it's a train wreck off the time in marketing. Yet this brings the highest return on investment from all the, all the strategies I've seen. And I think this table shows it rather eloquently. This is a story, God, must have been up five years ago. Someone rung me up and actually asked, can I have an extra 23,400 visitors to my website, please? OK, we can buy them through pay-per-click. Why? He said, well, I'm getting 23,400 to my website at the minute through SEO, and I want to double my sales. So I want double the traffic. I guess that makes sense. I said, OK, the cost per click is about a pound. So you'd have to pay about 23 grand a month ongoing to double it. What's your conversion rate? He said, well, it's looked it up. It was 0.3%. I said, OK, it's pretty terrible. I didn't say it that bluntly to him. I mean, that as a side is pretty terrible. That's over one in 300 people. Imagine you hired me as a salesperson to sell for you guys. And I walked into a room of over 300 people. And I spoke to them all, all prospects, all hot prospects. And I came out with one sale. You'd probably fire me, wouldn't you? So I said to him, look, how about you just pay 23 grand as a one-off and we get you to 1.3% conversion rate, get you from 0.3 to 1.3. Look at that increase in revenue. And that's for one month, right, with the same amount of traffic. The ROI continues ad infinitum because more months will occur. He'll keep getting this SEO traffic. And we actually did some research, asked around, found out that his best competitor had a 4.3% conversion rate. So we said, well, if we get you that, that gives you times 14 extra sales without having to buy any more traffic. Now, a lot of people push back and say, oh, Marcus, it takes a long time. Conversion optimization, it's a lot of faff, loads of dev work, devs are a pain. We all know they are. Sorry, the ones that are in the room, but you are. Do you remember that story I told you guys at the beginning about what I was really proud about, that estate agency startup that we turned around and got to become the quickest growing state agency startup or state agency in the whole of the UK. This is their case study. You move. They first came to us and they had a conversion rate of 0.2%. That's one in 500 people. That is horrendous. Their, their cost per lead was 485 pounds. They got three leads in one month and they said, business in, is in trouble, AdWords doesn't work, we're done. And I said, actually, your problem isn't AdWords, your problem is conversion. So we helped them build a new website. New website comes in, look at that in November, boom, 3%. Cost per lead drops from 485 to 28 quid, they're over the moon, but we only just got started. 
in four months went from 3% up to 9%. Look at the cost per lead. But the thing I love the most, look at that. Total leads from 3 to 262, 1,249, because we're putting more clicks in the top. We're putting more in the top. Now, some people think, okay, wow, how do you do that? I showed that to a client once and he got really, he really wanted to know what, what the methodology was. Well, it's this, it's basic data science, it's trial and learn. We just put sufficient resource in. So the first thing we do is we review performance. We use Google Analytics, obviously. We also use session recording software, such as SessionCam, Mouseflow, Hotjar. Show of hands, who here knows what I'm talking about with session recording software? Half the room, okay, cool. I've got a little demonstration in a second. What we're looking at when we're reviewing performance, again, quantitative and qualitative data, we're trying to find out why more people aren't buying. What are the drop-off points in the website? Why aren't more people clicking to inquire or buy? We then identify some quick wins. We make those quick wins. And then, in fairness, most of the stuff we look at, we're not sure. We don't know. So we create hypotheses and we run a controlled experiment and do A-B split testing, multivariant testing, and we rinse and repeat and we keep dialing it up. Now, those of you who didn't put your hand up about the session recording software, here's a cheeky example. So if you go onto most websites that are doing any half-decent marketing, they are watching you. There are marketing people watching how you interact. This is actually an event we did at Google last year with a company called Kyan. Uh, Laurent's a cracking guy, really nice bloke. It's for the financial services, this one. Um, you can see they're reading. They see, they, they see me there, and they couldn't care less. Um, but you see, we're watching that, right? We're seeing, but what, rather than just watching people interacting, we're actually looking systematically for drop-off points. And we're actually working with the University of Edinburgh with their uh, machine learning PhD department to actually get machine learning to watch this for us, because it's not a good use of using agency time to watch hours and hours of this software. Here's the one thing I want to leave you guys with. If you have the highest converting website in your industry, you can buy all the traffic. So I say that to clients, like, why isn't that your goal? Why isn't that the top KPI? You know the top four or five landing pages that are bringing the most profitable clients. Why isn't that your goal to have the highest converting website? Because that'll get you the biggest return on investment. But instead, people are like, no, 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 I want to be number one for this keyword. I want to have this many more followers on social media. But going back to Martin's thing at ROI, draw out the business case. Get the highest converting website in your industry. Some people say, okay, well, I'm entering an industry. I don't, you know, how do I play catch up? You know, there's, there are guys probably doing it. How do I learn from best practice? Well, we can conduct a gap analysis. And I'm going to show you how you can get some empirical data. So we have some clients in finance. And it's ISA season at the minute, for those of you in finance. And this is a, a cheeky keyword one of our clients wanted to rank for and wanted to come in. I always say, look, look at the ecosystem where your ads are going to be, right? So the first thing to look at is, is this a good keyword in terms of volume? Yep, 1, 000, sorry, 12,100, £8.50 CPC. A lot of you are looking going, hold on a second, Marcus, I don't get that data underneath my search bar. This is a cracking little plugin called uh, Keywords Everywhere. Highly recommend it. So let's start looking at some of the competitors. And if Shepard's friendly are here tonight, I'll give you your £8.50 back afterwards. But they're not, it's fine. So this is, so we click on it, we look at the landing page, right? And I might start having opinions about the landing page. Oh, I think it's clean and I like the green butter, but market research sample of one is pretty rubbish, right? Let's get some empirical data, guys. Well, this is where we go to another cheeky little plugin called Built With. People know about Built With? No one? Oh, I love this one. This plugin here tells you the tech stack on the website. So we can see that, look, they've got, they've got affiliate marketing, but we'll put that to one side. They're using Inspectlet, which is session recording software. They're running Google Optimize 360. So they're doing A-B testing. They've got event tracking. So we know these guys have invested a lot in conversion rate optimization. If only there was a way we could see all the previous iterations of their website. Well, there is. Who's heard of the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive? OK. Right, those of you who don't, just Google Internet Archive. What we can do is we can put in this cheeky little URL here, uh, obviously minus the UTM tracking code, and that will give you the screenshots of all of the previous iterations so we can see their learnings. So, so all of that money they had to do to test and learn, we can just learn from them. And it's the same with other people. You click on their ads, you spend another £8.50. As an aside, does anyone know what the highest CPC I've ever found is? Oh, you know, during the last talk, Hamilton. Do you, do you want to sell them? It's, it's uh, 800. It wasn't that high. God, could you imagine? No, the, the, the highest CPC I've come across so far, hopefully someone's got a story to beat it, £190. 
that was for no win, no fee. So that's uh, so yeah, it's an interesting one. But this was only eight pound fifty, so I'm sure Interact investor don't mind. But once again, it looks like a bit of a rubbish landing page in my opinion. But let's get some data. Are they actually doing anything with conversion rate optimization? No, it doesn't look like it. Facebook, etc. But Tag Manager, not a huge amount. So there's not much to learn here. But that's just a little insight into gap analyses and just getting accelerated learnings. I always say there's no secrets on the internet. There's Everyone's leaving a digital footprint. You just have to have a look at it to save some money and learn from them. OK, let's recap. So we know our top 40 keywords. We're smashing the click-through rate. We're smashing the conversion rate. It doesn't really matter because what we want is sales. So how can we push people in further down the funnel? That's where advanced remarketing comes in. So stay front of mind and become a thought leader as well. So before I get too deep into remarketing, I want to talk briefly about content marketing and it'll become apparent in a second. About five years ago, I think content marketing was in vogue. Everyone was supposed to be doing it. You know, get your brand to tell a story, man. You know, just create some really cool viral content and just put it out there and hope for the best. It's great. It's about brands telling stories and the phone will magically ring. So I spoke to lots of businesses who invested a lot in content marketing and the ones that were bothering to track it did also confess that there was no real return on investment. You want to know why I think that is? It's because when I asked people about it, 90% of the focus was on the content. So it was all about, yeah, let's create some cool content. And this is marketing teams getting excited about creating content that makes them feel good, might not be great for the target audience. 90% of the focus on the content and then marketing is an afterthought. But why are people talking about content marketing? It must be doing something. Like, why do they talk about it otherwise? Well, content marketing campaigns did work well for some people. And I studied it. And I actually got into the nitty gritty and saw this is what they actually did. They flipped it. 90% of the focus on a very detailed marketing strategy, drawing out a funnel, which dictates the content to push people down. Do you want to know why? Marketing is about selling the next step. That's it. And if you actually, if people actually bothered looking on the Content Marketing Institute's website, they told you this with their very beautiful and American content marketing's winning drive. You take someone who's never heard of you right the way through to being a raving fan, and the content pushes them down the funnel. That's all content's good for is selling the next step, not trying to create the next big viral hit. So chances are a lot of you guys have got some big brands in the room this evening. You will have lots of pieces of content that's probably dormant. Hopefully it's evergreen content so you can use it, it isn't about a specific time in the history. And while we're talking about content, well, we can bring it back to life and start attributing it and put, helping it to push people down the funnel. How? This is where we leverage it with our friend remarketing. So I'm assuming everyone knows what I mean by remarketing and retargeting, yeah? Okay, everyone's nodding. For those of you who don't, very briefly, content following you around the internet. You've probably all experienced it. Question. And Hamilton, no, you can't answer this one because you're at the last talk. What is the longest period of time you can follow someone around so you can remarket to them on Google for? Maximum time. Put a cookie on their browser. How long until that, that cookie expires? Days. No. 100, no. Keep going. 500. Close. 540. Year and a half. And it's interesting. I think 30 is the default setting. That's why a lot of people think about it. Now, why would you stop remarketing someone after 30 days? Well, that might be a bit annoying. And you honestly going to tell me, Marcus, that I should follow people around for 180 days? Yes, if you're changing up the content regularly. Do you see what I mean? If you follow someone with the same banner ad for, for a year and a half, that's going to get annoying. But if every two or three days or every week you're changing the content, and the content actually has interesting calls to action for them to come back to your website to download something or whatever, you're doing, as Martin said, you're looking after those people on your remarketing lists. And here's the thing. People assume that remarketing is just banner ads, but it's not. You can remarket across all platforms. Now, maybe not always for 540 days. I think Facebook's 180. But if you look at all of these different channels, we've got Google Display Networks. That's banner ads, right? We have Twitter. We have search ads. We have Facebook sponsored posts and videos, YouTube, LinkedIn. YouTube in-stream advertising, I love that. You know when you can skip after six seconds. Does anyone know when you're actually charged? Anyone know? 
and that 30 seconds. So they can watch like 25 seconds. They don't get charged until 30. We started doing that when it first came out about four years ago. And the cost per view after 30 seconds was one pence. And on average now, it's gone up to about 20, right? But here's the thing I really want to impress on you guys. Remarketing is the most underpriced digital marketing strategy available right now, bar none. Partly as well because it's done on pay-per-click rather than CPM, cost per thousand, right? You only get charged when someone clicks on it. We've got well over a million impressions for clients for less than a thousand pounds a month, following them around with really, really good content, staying front of mind. That's the trick. You can leverage good content by doing that. You might be thinking, well, hold on a second, Marcus. I actually want to spend more than a grand and actually get them clicking, because when they click and come back, they might inquire. And that's a really good point, because actually, what we do for clients is we draw out remarketing pathways. This is what we did for a client of ours, right? It's like an email funnel. Someone clicks on here, they're coming from LinkedIn. They're followed around saying, hey, download this really interesting ebook that's relevant to you and your job title on LinkedIn. They then click, they come on the landing page, they may or may not download the ebook. If they do, they're added to the ebook list and then download use cases, so on and so forth. When we speak to prospects, I get my sales guys so already a lead that's come in, to download our cred stock off a web page where they give their consent to be cookied and they're followed around with sales videos. Some of my clients in the room know about this, right? So think about it. Any chance, you, anywhere on the funnel, you can actually send out a link to a web page and get them put on a different list. So you start thinking about different lists and different bits of content to follow them around. Here's the cool thing, I think at least. Every time they click and come back, they've had it for another 540 days. So a really interesting KPI could be growing that remarketing list and its interaction. But you see what I mean? As in a post-GDPR world, if there's, a, if there's a smaller email marketing list, actually growing a remarketing one may be easier. And it's a more low cost, high impact, front of work, mind way of doing marketing. So in summary, guys, I've outlined three strategies. We do them all already. They've been proven to work very well. I think if you did one, in isolation, it'd be helpful. But as you can see, there is a logical order to them. If you did all three, there's a compound impact of doing them together. And hopefully that compound impact will help offset any disruption to CPCs or affiliate marketing or anything in a post-GDPR world. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you found it interesting and useful.